Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak at this great conference. Uh, my talk is about uh, an urban design studio course my colleague and I did together in spring of 2014. Uh, the main motivation behind uh, this studio project was that the city of Wilmington was in the process to update their comprehensive plan. What well, we just heard from David in the morning, right? Comprehensive plan is not that, and perhaps this is just one, but not example. And uh, as, as a coastal city in North Carolina, the uh, city of Wilmington is uh, interested to understand uh, the impact of potential rising sea level on the future of their city. So we decided to combine two uh, design courses together and to look at this issue. So one is uh, an architectural design studio, the other one is urban design studio. And this picture uh, taken in uh, uh, their historic downtown uh, perhaps describes the key questions this studio project uh, was trying to uh, answer. So what can we do when uh, the water meets uh, a market or a town. So obviously we could have two choices. We could try to stop the water from coming in or we can move uh, the market or say design uh, a town in a different way. So as a studio exercise, uh, we decided to go with the second option and we want to look at uh, 100 years from now uh, assuming a uh, city would face two meter sea level rise, and what city could respond? And one of uh, uh, the strategies um, was to use this uh, transect concept to take a closer look at how city would be affected by uh, the rising sea level. Uh, the assumption was uh, there, there might be different type of uh, impact. Some part of the city may eventually just go underwater, right, due to proximity to uh, the coastline or, or lower uh, uh, elevation. And, but other part of the city, even though further inland, away from the coastline, but they may still be effective because, uh, you know, you, you would have some kind of population, migration, infrastructure laws. So you need to put some other places to, to house those population migration. So, um, so we decided to uh, use GIS to help us along the process. And we encourage the student to carry uh, the, whole, the GIS analysis throughout the entire project life cycle. So what we did was uh, through these uh, three iterative steps, uh, each one done at uh, a different geographic scale from regional to sub area to uh, site level. So on a regional scale, uh, we focus primarily on, on the broader uh, environmental, physical, or socioeconomic systems. And first, we we'll look at how uh, water may affect uh, the, the overall city landscape. And then we overlap with other uh, infrastructure layers or uh, ecological networks such as uh, wetland, greenway, and try to identify uh, what we call uh, sacrificial lands, the where you know, those area of city may be in trouble. So that gave us some kind of rough idea how many people uh, may be affected, uh, how much infrastructure may be lost. But on the other end of uh, the analysis, we also uh, needed to ident identify uh, those places we can, we can move people from the coastal city, uh, coastal line uh, further inland. And the way we did was we, we tried to identify neighborhood typically underserved, underinvested, socially or economically distressed neighborhood. And we just use this so-called social uh, vulnerability index and look at the uh, sensor track by sensor track and come up with this map. And then overlap again back to the infrastructure layer and, and ecological networks and also uh, identify uh, the parcels with uh, potential for future, future development based on uh, availability of vacant lands. Uh, and once again, just overlap back to uh, the uh, two meter sea level rise and 12 feet stone surges. And eventually the whole process helped us identify uh, we call key zones, 
Some of them are on the sacrificial end. Some of them were on the receiving end. So the next step, uh, just further zoom into some of the zones and look at uh, uh, the, the detail of physical structures and see how each zone could, uh, what kind of strategy can, can, can and can have some kind of physical transformation to, to prepare for this kind of uh, sea, uh, rising sea level events. And again, we use GI to see the impact of rising sea level to uh, the overall uh, uh, physical structure of each of the zones and overlay on top of different layers, like street networks, uh, building footprint, open space systems, and also look at demographic information, land use, land value, and eventually, students were able to come up with uh, a plan and to guide future like, physical transformation such as new circulation, new density, maybe new zoning, uh, some kind of strategy to incorporate water, water features into uh, the existing uh, uh, street network. And this is another example uh, for the southern part of the city, you can see you have a river on one side, you have ocean on the other side. So again, students use this mapping technique to look at all the special relationship between different elements. And then uh, this student pays special attention on the existing street network parallel to uh, the water line. And the idea was to use the, the existing streets as some kind of a buffer or sponge to kind of re-channel the incoming water and then propose some ideas how, how the city could be transformed physically to prepare for that kind of natural disaster. And finally, zoom into the, uh, the district scale, the site level scale, and this is perhaps the, 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 the student favorite scale because they are, they are, they are architecture students, they want to do design. And again, we, we, we ask them to use GI to once again look at the impact of rising sea level, look at all the different layers physically or environmentally. And finally, they were able to look at uh, the details uh, of physical structures of different kind of typical urban design elements. And our next steps would be, hopefully city can carry out, can carry all the elements design students come up with, and then kind of go backwards uh, integrate all the design from district level and back to the sub-area level and all the way back to city region-wide level. And hopefully the, the, the comprehensive plan can have a better coordinations among all the different elements. And with GIS integrated into all the steps, I think a student were able to move their thinking process across the, the different geographic scale pretty smoothly and kind of tie their small-scale design back to the whole regional elements. And I just want to take a moment to kind of acknowledge my, my colleague, Dr. Jose Gomez and Ms. Ellen Davis from Wilmington for their help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.